Quan Jameson about to blow up. Ed Coe defeats Jameson, the ACC's leading scorer. 12th scorer in the nation, gives the Hills a two-point lead. And then Jameson, I rock the party that rocks your body. 9 of 11 shooting in the first half. Then you tell Steve Wojciechowski, you like apples? How do you like them apples? Tar Heels on a 40 to 18 run. Then Ed Coda, nice flip to Antoine. Jameson, 23 in the first half, 35 and 11 rebounds for the game. Second half, the heart and soul Duke's team, Steve Wojciechowski, chewing out his teammates. The Tar Heels would help Duke rally. Mokhtar Jai trips over Shane Battier, gets called for his fifth foul, and slams the ball, draws a technical. Duke would hit all four free throws, and they got the ball back. Trajan Langdon, money on the jumper. A 12-0 Duke run, a six-point play, but the Heels pull it away. Vince Carter, the ill fader. Vince, 17.7 rebounds. The former high school drum major is geeked, and then the sickest almost dunk in history. Coda, alley-oop off the glass, but Vince blew the dunk. That would have rocked the world. Still, Shimon Williams drained the three. Shimon, 17 points. The Dean Doan is rocking. Vince says, who's number one? No doubt. North Carolina crushes Duke 97 to 73. The Blue Devils 25 to 9 run in the second half was met by a North Carolina 24 to 4 run to end the game. Anything you. He's an All American and if not the, the best, uh, surely one of the best players in the country. Uh, we think he's the best and uh, he's so quick, he's hard to, he's hard to handle in there. My main concern, I had to keep moving out the ball, and I did it tonight. And uh, if I just would have stood around uh, thinking I could just, you know, most of them all day, it would have been a, a long night for me. So I definitely had to just move it out the ball, and I did it. If he doesn't get the national player of the year, I don't know who's voting, you know. Um, tonight, he just destroyed us, and like I say, he showed why he's player of the year candidate, and that's what he did. Back. 10 and 0 in the Pac-10. Michael Dickerson, a Seattle native. What a game he had in the second half against the Huskies. Nailing the three. One for one from the field was Dickerson. Same spot, another three. Two for two. Off the pick, Dickerson. Three for three from the field. You bet he was putting on his show. The nice feed from Simon to Dickerson. Four of four. And then Dickerson baseline. Hitting the J. Five of five from the field. Dickerson, the fadeaway. Six of six from the field just in the second half. And then the lay-in. That's seven of seven for Dickerson. All alone, the slam 8 of 80s doing it all sorts of ways. Dickerson, the free throw line, Jay, 9 for 9, and Dickerson, another 3, 10 for 10, and Dickerson, another fadeaway. Michael Dickerson finishing with 30 points in a 112-81 thumping of Watt. Martin watching. Second half, Bruins up 2. The strip. And then Earl Watson finding Toby Bailey, the alley -oop. Bruins up four. Oregon trying to run with the Bruins. That would be a mistake. The turnover, Coach Ernie Kent trying to settle things down, and uh, the Oregon Ducks do settle something down. Dante Quinine, they kiss off the glass on the drive. Oregon takes the lead by one. And then Brown for three. Oregon up two. Toby Bailey right back, one of his own. UCLA back on top by one. This was a good game, 16 for Bailey. Brown coming right back, nailing the three. And then it's Brown again. Another from long distance. The Ducks by three. Brown with 22 points. Five three-pointers for him. Speaking of three-pointers, Baron Davis hits from there. Cuts Oregon's lead to one. And then with the shot clock winding down, Rosemont picking up the loose ball. And he hits the fall away three. Jamar Curry a three of his own. Ducks by six. And Coach Kent is pumped. The Ducks go on to win it. 97 to 81. Rick Brown had a big second half for the Ducks. Nine of ten, four of six are getting the pass. Trailer. In the blocks, hits the, the fadeaway. Trailer's 1,000th career point, 37th Michigan touchdown. player to do so. This man right here, Trailer. The air ball, meanwhile, from the lane. Okay, so he struggled a bit. Four in the first half. But the first half would belong to this man, Evan Eschmeyer. The Big Ten's leading scorer, nice play, 10 and a half, but he'd have a bad game for him. Northwestern using ball movement, Nate Pomaday hitting the three. Northwestern up by 12, their biggest lead. Michigan pack in the lane, Robbie Reed stripping Eschmeyer. Outlet to Jera, Ward for the lay-in. Ward finished with 19, Michigan down 52-46, but they were up too late in the game. Travis Conlon to Maceo Baston, who hits over Eschmeyer. Eschmeyer would foul out. Baston with 10 points and four assists in a Michigan victory as they come back from 12 points down with about nine minutes to go to improve to seven and three in the big. Brian Dignan finding Danny Bauer cutting back door. Cougars down five. Utah in control in this game, though. David Jackson, great up fake, taking the dribble and then nailing the open J. Utah.
Utah up 10 at the break. Second half now, Utes still cruising. Hano, Medela, misses the J. The tip goes to point guard Andre Miller. Reverse lay and gets to go. 13 in the game for Miller. Utah goes on to win it, 83-68. Wyoming against New Mexico, first half action. Kenny Thomas, always dangerous wherever he is. The one-handed jam, 17 in the game for Thomas. Second half, Thomas can dish the rock as well. To Clayton Shields, two of his 25. New Mexico wins it, 89-59. to 59. Colorado State against UTEP. Rico Nelson, just watch him. Wow, Nelson was 16 in the game, but Colorado State was just too tough. Matt Barnett hits the J5 of five from the floor was Barnett in this game. Don Haskins not happy with his team's results. And also from... Falls, loses the ball. Sunday out of bio, gets it, throws it in to Ali Thompson. Ali, what a knockout. He had nine points, Arkansas up three. Second half, Kareem Reed lobs to Derrick Hood. Jam! 13 points for Hood. Arkansas wins it 100 to 87. Two lane down three, Byron Mouton. Can he tie it? You bet he can. At the buzzer, we go to double OT, tied at 78-31 for Mouton. Southern Miss up one, seven seconds to go, Kelly McCarty. The miss, Jimmy Floyd, the board. Pass back to McCarty. McCarty scores and gets fouled with 1.8 seconds left. Southern Miss up three. Perry Clark cannot believe it. So here we go. McCarty missing the ensuing free throw. Ladarrell Billingsley rebound. The long shot for three. No. Oh, so close no. yet. <laughs> and there you have it. Southern Miss wins at 89. A little easy. Chris Crosby gets crossed up. And then Blake Pengelly with the kiss. Side. Washington State shot 33% in the first half. As for Mike Bibby to A.J. Bramlett. Zona led 39-24 at the half. Second half, different half, same story. Eugene Edgerson to Bennett Davison. Arizona wins. Beating Wazoo for the 26th straight time. The last time Wazoo beat Arizona. And in the first half, Corey Benjamin tells Toby Bailey. Bailey nah. Benjamin getting it done on the offensive end, as he has been doing of late, from DeAndre Tanner. He rips it down. Oregon State down three, 28-25, but Benjamin had to go to the bench for three fouls, and UCLA took advantage. Toby Bailey for three, and then Jelani McCoy grabs a loose ball and gets it to Bailey. At the other end, he had 20 points, 21 points did Bailey. Caps off an 18-4 UCLA run. Corey Benjamin could only watch as the Bruins would cruise. Jelani McCoy can't get the first one, but wide open to get the second. He had 14 points and 12 rebounds. UCLA wins 84-75. Chris Johnson and J.R. Henderson each score. About the thrill of competition in there, too, but now let's get real here. Mike Montgomery's crew, 7-0 on the road coming in this year, but not going so well early. Tim Young, good boy, misses the two-footer. Then it's Chris Weems. Stanford starter shot 29%. The Cardinal bombing. Another strong day for Richard Hamilton of the Huskies, demanding the ball and hitting the three. He was four or five behind the arc. He had 24 points. UConn was never threatened in this one. Working hard down low. Ricky Moore, the nice save to Kevin Freeman. Two of his seven as UConn cruises to the 76-56 win. It was UConn's fifth straight victory. Sting the hall, first half. Syracuse up six, and they are running. Elver of China. His only hoop, and we showed it to you with that thorough. Syracuse up by eight. Still first half. The Hall up two. Lavelle Sanders, the three-pointer. Then it's Donnell Williams. That's a three. Five of seven from three-point range for him. 23 points. Seton Hall up ten. Then it's Sanders again for three. Jim Beheim stunned. Seton Hall finished the first half with a 31-5 run. Second half, more of the same. Sanders, three of his 23. 13 three of the game for the Hall. A new Carrier Dome record for an opponent. Seton Hall pulling out this surprising 24-point win. Fogler looking to build on their seven-game winning streak as they visit Tennessee. It would not be easy. End of the first half, Hall's already up five. Tony Harris, Brandon Wharton, open the foul. Harris and Wharton combined for 28 first-half points. Tennessee up seven at the break. Second half, B.J. Mackey trying to lead the Gamecocks back. As he hits the three, he finished with 27. Carolina up two. Score tied at 63. Mackey called for traveling on the drive. Then off the turnover, Wharton back to freshman. Isaiah Victor, three of his nine. Tennessee takes a three-point lead. More crucial turnovers for the Gamecocks. Melvin Watson stripped by Harris. 
And the Vols get the upset. South Carolina 21 turnovers in the game. It's a one-point Tennessee win. 70 to Michigan State's Mateen Cleaves. Good hustle. He drumps right into the stands for a loose ball. He would be okay. So would the people he landed on. More Michigan State hustle. Doug Davis, he throws the loose ball off of Iowa's Kent McCausland. Michigan State retains possession. And Tom Davis still calling for play number two. Dewan Wiley with the block shot. And then it's Cleaves running the break. Dishing to Morris Peterson. He had 14 points. Then it's Cleves again running the break to Peterson, who dishes to Wiley. And Coach Davis watched Cleves contribute in more of the ways than one because the Hawkeyes held him to four points, all on free throws. Antonio's Michigan's tough defensively inside. Gerard Ward blocks Quincy Lewis. He decides to take it on Maceo Baston. Same result. Wolverines up two at the break. Clem Haskins says, you know what? Let's try outside, since inside wasn't working. Lewis drains three of his 19, then Eric Harris nails one of his five trays on the day, and to add insult to Wolverine injury, six foot 11 center Kyle Sandin hits a tray. And Michigan loses a while under all those threes. The Gophers stuck a school record four. This was a microcosm of the whole game. Chad Austin taking the A, B, and several other trains to the basket. Austin all by himself in white jerseys. You know what? No traveling was called. Jim O'Brien, what do you think his reaction was? That's right. It sparked an 18-5 Purdue run, and then the second half, Mike Robinson to Brad Miller. Back to Robinson. Boilermakers roll 107-75. The 32-point loss, the Buckeyes' worst loss ever at St. John Arena. <laughs> Big game for Gabe Luellis. Drains the three. Luellis finished 6 of 8 from three-point range, 24 points. More Tigers, Mitch Henderson fiends James Mistaglio for the land. Quintessential backdoor Princeton play. Princeton. Hey Lopez, that's Felipe with his parents. That's Felipe again. Perhaps you recognize him. The nice acrobatic move. Lopez failing good. 17 points, just 6 of 18 from the field though. Red Storm down by 3. Just moments later, Lopez playing some D. The steal, the slam. It is St. John's by 1. Jason Williams on hand. Likes what he sees. Lopez, he can pass too. Lavar Postel for the jam. And the Red Storm pulling off the upset. 77 69, St. John's in the whack. Rick Majerus looking on, second half. Mike Wilkes, the penetration to Jarvis Kelly Sani for the big jam. He had 12. Rice down four, but the Owls are fired up. Utah's next possession, Hanno Medela. The Flying Finn, he finished with 16. It is Utes by seven. Then the Utes going inside to Michael Doliak, their other big gun. Doliak, the floater, the foul, 17 points, eight boards for him as the Utes pull away for the 60 to 49 win. That 25 left, UNC Charlotte up by three. With 325 left in the game, a very key possession. It's 305 left now. Kelvin Price misses the tip in, but DeMarco Johnson steals it and saves it. So UNCC still on the same possession. Now with two minutes and 35 seconds left in the game, DeMarco Johnson misses the jumper, but Delonte Hill grabs the board and kicks it out to Sean Coulson. So it's still 49ers ball, same possession. Now 2-11 left in the game. Galen Young passes to Hill for three. It is no good, but DeMarco Johnson, another rebound and kicks it out to Coulson. So it's still 49ers ball with a buck, 42 left, same possession. Coulson gives it to Young, who throws a no-look pass to Price who is finally right on this possession. After a minute and 52 seconds of their own offensive half court, the 49ers pull out a win, and Bob Huggins, who you saw much distress right there, said afterwards, I thought the key was they played harder than we did. They beat us to every loose ball. They beat us to every rebound. And the 49ers did it in their first nationally televised home game in school history.